Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh and in this video, we are going to talk about logistic regression classifier. We look at the classification types and look at a sigmoid function, softmax function and the associated cost functions with logistic regression. So what is classification? Here we have an example where we have uh, three columns of data. The first two are features or predictors and the last one is the response variable or a target variable and here we have water content and fructose content that uh, can be used to identify if that particular sample is representing a fruit such as an apple or a pineapple and this is a made up data set so probably does not have any meaning in the real world but just for illustration purposes we'll work with this data now if we want to classify this the first step would be then to fit a model to this particular data set such that uh, we can find optimal parameters or weights that can be used uh, for prediction here then uh, this class of fruit is only there are only two classes apple pineapple so we could represent one class as number one and other class as number zero and then fit a binary classifier on this one uh, so to find the parameters or weight that can separate uh, these samples into two separate uh, categories and once we have those parameters or weights we can then use those along with a new data set to predict if a new data point is uh, and if it's an apple or if it's a pineapple now to do that if we look at it uh, visually uh, uh, we can plot those data points so this could be water content could be plotted on x and fructose content on the y-axis represent here by x1 and x2 and when we plot those eight data points here uh, this is just an illust uh, representative illustration it's not to scale uh, but to show that once we have plotted these data points we can uh, separate them by drawing a horizon uh, by drawing a line through these data points so this could be one group because these data points are much closer and this could be the second group and once we draw that line using uh, that that is equivalent to saying once we fit a model that identifies any data points on across this line as apples and across this on this side of that line as pineapples that line it would be the decision boundary and so if we have a new data point now such as shown here we can use that train model and say that okay that point is closer to this set of points and it's in this region of the decision boundary so that probably is a pineapple and so we classify that as a pineapple now we have seen an example where we just have two classes what happens if we have more than two classes uh, let's say we have three classes where we have an additional orange so there are a couple of ways to do this uh, classification where one of the methods is using one versus rest uh, or OVR that's used in scikit-learn where the idea is to uh, fit uh, ideas to fit three different binary classifiers one for apple one that identifies the apples then another that identifies the pineapples and then a third one that ident identifies oranges now if we have a new data point such as shown here we can uh, run that data point through all the three classifiers and then pick the classifier that finds the highest score uh, and classify it as that particular class so in this case this point could be classified as an apple let's now switch gears and look at uh, how a linear fit would work that we have seen before in case of a classification problem uh, let's say we have two classes uh, apple and an orange so is is a data point an apple yes or no so that's the answer here and or we could say if 
the is the data point an orange yes or no so if it's an orange we have the value as one uh, that is a positive class and if it's an apple uh, 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 that is it's a not an orange then it's a negative class and so we have a value of zero and here on the x-axis we can think of this for simplicity any feature let's say this could be the water content of the fruit and if there is higher water content then it's an orange if it's lesser water content then it's an apple now if we plot a few of these points that are shown here if we try to fit a linear model through this such as shown by this blue line then what we can say is that here in the middle which is 0 0.5 that could be the threshold and we can say that if we look on the x-axis based on this we can say that all points past this zero point this falls uh, maybe around 0 0.25 so all the data points that have uh, the water content above that particular threshold then those are oranges uh, and all the data points below with water content below that would be apples however the problem arises when if we have a new data point then the linear fit shifts now that uh, this particular data point which is in the center the threshold that shifts to this point at 2.5 uh, little over 2.5 as compared to here and now the if we have a new data point that we are trying to predict if it's an apple or an orange then uh, here now we'll say that oh, if the water content is above this point 2.5 then it would be an apple it would be an orange and if it's less than this point it would be an apple so this linear fit does not work well in this type of problem of binary classification so one way to solve that problem is to use a sigmoid function such as shown here which is s shaped curve so when we fit data to when we fit a sigmoid function to the data then here we can say that if there is a new data point uh, such as here we can uh, say that this point has a probability of zero uh, above 0 0.5 and therefore it's an orange whereas if there is a data point around here we can say that this particular data point has a probability less than 0 0.5 and therefore it's an apple and in this case the threshold does not change if we have a higher data point if we have a data point, new data point right here uh, then the fit does not change uh, as shown earlier in the linear fit where we had the threshold shifted and one point to note with the sigmoid function is that the curve down here it approaches zero but it never really uh, reaches zero similarly here the curve approaches one but it never uh, reaches one and so that's those are the properties of this sigmoid function and then we'll look at uh, some equations that describe this so here we have uh, as we have seen before uh, for base probabilities we have the posterior that is proportional to the likelihood and the prior so the posterior probability for a class one given the data x is equal to the probability of the data x given class one and the probability uh, the, and the prior probability of class one and then that is divided by this uh, sum is some probabilities of marginal likelihood to so that the posterior probability lies between zero and one now this can be solved to get this particular equation which is a sigmoid function which is represented by one divided by one plus e to the power negative a and uh, the reference I've uh, listed here on the slide below. So, if you need more information on this, uh, this particular uh, chapter four in this book has pattern recognition book has a really good uh, description on this. So, that is the sigmoid function, and where a is given by this relation right here, where ln is the uh, logarithm, and 
we can also show that this uh, sigma of a where this is the sigmoid can also be written in this particular form so if we now have a different data a different set of data uh, shown here in the table where these are the scores or activations and we want to classify these so each row is a separate sample uh, based on uh, some features and if we now have passed this through the sigmoid function we get these values now we can compare if these values are above or below the threshold of 0 0.5 that we have set and then uh, because this is less than 2.2 point 212 is less than 0 0.5 you can say that that is an apple uh, whereas 0 0.5 so that's an orange then again this 0 0.5449 that's also an orange and so on so that's how the sigmoid function works now based we'll later look uh, as this series goes on we'll look at how uh, what is the effect of changing these threshold values so we can set this uh, threshold values lower or higher depending upon uh, how uh, depending upon what type of misclassification is acceptable so is it okay if some of the apples are correctly in classified as oranges or is it more okay to classify some of the oranges as apples so we'll look at that a little later on in future videos but the summary here is that uh, the sigmoid function is really helpful in binary classification problems now if we have more than one classes uh, the we can write the function of based on this where we are trying to find the posterior probability ck given the data x which is equal to again the likelihood and the prior divided by the normalizing term here and we can then arrive at this function which is similar to the sigmoid function except this has more than one class and so this is a soft max function where we are dividing this by e to the power a j which is for all the classes and this again can be represented a k can be represented by this term and it can be represented by this term right here where the k represents the class and so now if we uh, have uh, uh, same three sets of uh, uh, samples we can run them through uh, diff each particular sample through all the classifiers three classifiers and in this case we see that we run this through the three classifiers and all these values then sum to one and suppose we have these three samples then in the first sample the classifier the value for the softmax function is higher for this particular uh, class and so we classify that data point as a pineapple here we are classifying it as an uh, app, uh, orange because 0 0.7 is higher than the rest of the three values in that softmax output and here we have the third softmax output where the value for uh, first a uh, classifier which is 0 0.8251 is largest and so we classify that as an apple so that's a, a summary about how a logistic regression works in a classification problems so scikit-learn has uh, functions uh, where we can use both we can classify both the binary class uh, binary uh, data set which has just two classes or if the data has more than two classes then we can use a softmax function in when we are training the model now the cost function is so this is the equation that we have seen in the previous videos where the probability uh, of a target t given the input x and the parameters w is equal to the product of this is the for yn is for class one and then one minus yn is the second class and then here the yn is represented here which is the probability of class c1 given the data xn so if we go back 
apply it so this is class uh, c c1 given the data x so we are looking at the posterior probability and sorry uh, posterior probability and here the output t is if it's just two classes it would be zero or one for each of the samples now to find the optimal parameters the goal is always to uh, uh, minimize the losses so we have to start with the cost function or objective function and this is what i'm trying to get at so this is not a complete derivation but just to show you pointers along the way to just to have an intuition of what's going on in the background if we take a negative log we can arrive at this equation that is shown here and that is similar to uh, the so the notations now have changed here because these are the notations used in the scikit-learn uh, documents and here we have sigma of negative sigma of yi log pi plus one minus yi log pi so that with that equation we can substitute in the values of sigma x and p of i to arrive at this particular objective function which is in the sklearn docs i know this is not a complete derivation it's just hand wavy approach but i'm hoping that this gives you some idea of what how this particular equation uh, has arrived and so after doing a bunch of math the final equations or objective functions that are there are these three so the first one is the objective function which also has the l1 regularization term the second one has the l2 regularization term and the last one has the elastic net regularization if you are not familiar with regularization i uh, suggest looking at our past videos where we go in depth in each of these types of methods the general objective of regularization is to avoid overfitting so that if we uh, because the objective in machine learning training a machine learning model is to fit a model such that it generalizes better on unseen data so we don't want to fit too closely on a trained data and that's what these regularization terms help us do is fit uh, the data on a trained set that is can be generalized more with the unseen test data set now these are some of the terminologies that uh, we can look at because it's important to know when we are talking about these in t when we are dealing with logistic regression so what is odds log of odds and logit so we know that the probability p ranges from 0 to 1 odds is a quantity that ranges between 0 to infinity and here o represents odds so the probability is equal to 0 o divided by 1 plus o so odds divided by 1 plus odds and odds in can be written as probability divided by 1 minus probability so probability p is a success and 1 minus probability would be the failure so we are taking the ratio of that and that's the odds log of odds then ranges between minus infinity to plus infinity and if you hear the term logit which is uh, what the output would be when we run the code it's a log of odds and it is this quantity which is log of p divided by 1 minus p and if we look at which is the probability of class 1 given the data x divided by probability of class 2 given the data x and log of that so when uh, and this is the how the p is represented which is the linear uh, the para features are linearly related by these parameters beta 0 beta 1 beta n now the reason why we are talking about odds and log of odds 
because we need this when we are trying to interpret the output of the logistic regression so here let's look at this example which is a spectre and mazio program effectiveness data we have these data points gpa t uh, which is the binary variable uh, i've written the description below that indicates if a student's grade is improved so if it's one uh, then the student's grade is uh, has improved so that's positive class and if it's not then it's a negative class so here we have this grade column the last column that's the response or the target column t that we denoted earlier then these three columns which is t u c e is the test score participation in program and students grade point average so those three are the features or predictors that we are going that are used to train the model now uh, let's assume that we have trained the model and now we are looking at the output so in output we get this uh, output from stats model so i should mention that this is not the output that we get from the uh, uh, scikit-learn library uh, i'm using the stats model output here because it has um, information about probability that is important to kind of convey the message of how to interpret the output of logistic regression so the important column here is the coefficient coef and that is the log of odds so to look at the odds what we need to do then is to get the exponential value of this which is shown here on the left hand side so what this simply tells us that is that one unit increase in gpa increases the odds that the student score would increase is by 16.8 times so there is a um, the odds increase by 16.8 times similarly if the score in the economics class increases then the odds that a student's grade would improve uh, would increase by 1.099 times and similarly if the student participates in a program then that also uh, seems to increase the odds that a student's grade would improve by 10.79 times now similar to this there is something called as marginal uh, ratios we'll look at that in a moment but the other points to note here is that this is the probability and here what this is telling us is if we have the alpha value set at 0 0.05 then all the values of all the p values for the features or predictors that are below 0 0.05 are significant so we have this particular uh, value significant and this value significant so the gpa and the participation in program seem to be two important uh, predictors that affect the grade of a student the improvement of a gr student's grade and this z value that's in this column is simply ratio of the coefficient to the standard error now uh, one point to note here is that all these values are positive uh, which tells us that uh, increase in uh, for example gpa increases the odds of a student's grade to improve if this was negative then it would have been a reverse uh, relationship uh, furthermore up, on up top here this is the p-value suggesting how good the model is fit uh, so p-value less than 0 0.05 which means that the model fits well the pseudo r square value tells us how much of the variation in the output y or the target variable y is explained by the features gpa tuc and psi and this value is 0 0.37 the higher the value the better it is so the max value would be one uh, which would be perfect explanation and here the method used is MLE for maximum likelihood. 
and here we have the total number of observations that is 32 now let's move on and look at marginal log marginal effects so here in this particular case what we see is dy by dx which is the change in y which is the target variable for a change in the predictors so if we look at gpa then one unit increase in gpa increases the predicted probability of the student's grade to improve by 36 percent and similarly if the student participates in the party uh, participates in the program then the predicted probability for the student's grade to improve increases by 30 uh, percent whereas if the student's grade in economics or uh, test score in economics increases then the predicted probability for a student's grade to increase increases only by uh, 30 of uh, uh, sorry by one percent 1.2 percent now with that there is some additional information in this and previous table which is this confidence interval so we have a 95 percent confidence interval on this side and similarly we have the same confidence interval presented in this slide which is right here apart from this uh, as we can see we have the uh, z score and we also have the p value and the p value again is significant for these two uh, predictors or features gpa and psi as we have seen before so that's how the results of the logistic regression can be interpreted there are uh, several additional there is also several additional uh, uh, attributes associated with this uh, which can give some additional information and we'll look at some of those when we do the actual coding now moving on let's look at the code snippet here this is the standard uh, format that we have been seeing in this series Imp we import the library and then import the linear model then we have the train data right here and then we have the test data set now the difference is that here in the train data we have this binary class which is just z with ones and zeros and again the test uh, data x test would be the features maybe this is x1 this is x2 and that is used to predict the class to which that particular sample belongs and for the coding here we have initialized the variable reg using logistic regression and then we perform the fit using the x train and y train and finally uh, we use the fit uh, on the pred uh, use the fit with the coefficients to predict on the test set so that was it for this video i hope in this video you got an intuition about what classification is uh, and then what is binary classification what is multivariate classification or multi-class classification and how uh, the linear fit is not a best way to do such type of classification and how a sigmoid function helps to classify uh, data uh, you, in this particular case of logistic regression we also looked at the interpretation of output from the stats model library uh, although from the scikit-learn library we will get the say similar results for coefficients so the interpretation would be same it's just that with stats model we get additional information uh, that i just wanted to share here in this video and then we briefly looked at the outline of the math behind which a cost function or objective function is minimized and uh, we also looked at how the types of regularization that can be associated uh, within it l1 l2 and elastic net so all these can be tuned when we uh, perform the logistic regression in scikit-learn 
and finally we looked at the code snippet as on this slide i hope that this helps you uh, get uh, uh, get started into the classification uh, uh, classification part of machine learning we also did a rich classification previously this is some um, a new topic and you'll see that logistic regression is used in a wide variety of applications uh, for example it is also used for screening or finding variables that are more important than others so that's it can be used in forward stepwise selection and algorithms such as those uh, we'll look at those in future videos but in next video we'll definitely do a comparison between this method and a few other classification methods such as the reach that we have uh, already seen before please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video thank you